Hi everyone, welcome to this GCC Higher Revision video. The 77 days or 11 weeks to go into your GCC Mavs exam. So keep up the hard work, you're doing really, really well. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on box plots. So we looked at cumulative frequency graphs yesterday, and today we're going to be looking at box plots. And if you've got car 22, that's going to be quite a useful one for you. So in today's lesson, I'm going to talk about what a box plot is, the key lines that you need to draw, and also how to do some questions whenever we're interpreting box plots and even comparing them. Um, so I'd highly recommend watching this video, answering the questions, so pausing at certain times and doing the questions, and then at the end I'll talk about the practice questions. So let's get started. So today we're going to be looking at box plots. Now some people call this box and whisker diagrams, but I tend to call it box plots. And whenever you draw a box plot, what you do is you draw five vertical lines. So the five vertical lines that you draw are the lowest value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value. So for, if you have some data, if you find the lowest value, you, that would be your first line. If you then work out the lower quartile, so a quarter of the way through the data, and you work out that value, that would be your lower quartile. If you then find the, the median, then that would be your middle line. Then you'd work out your upper quartile, that's three quarters of the way through the data, that would be that line, and then your highest value would be that line. Now the middle 50% of the data is the, between the lower quartile and the upper quartile, and you connect those up as a box, and then you draw these whiskers, that's why people call it box and whiskers, you draw all these lines connecting up that box to the lowest value and to the highest value. So this is a box plot. Now it's also quite useful to remember that if you've got the median, if half of the data lays below the median, half the data lays above the median, and that between each of the vertical lines, 25% of the data lies. So for instance, between the lowest value and the lower quartile, 25% of the data, between the lower quartile and the median, another 25% of the data, between the median and the upper quartile, 25% of the data, and between the upper quartile and the highest value, 25% of the data. So that's quite useful to remember as well. Okay, so that's a box plot. Now let's have a look at a question where we're asked to read a box plot. Okay, so let's have a look at a question. So here we've got a box plot and horizontal we've got our scale rainfall millimeters going from zero to five millimeters and we've got this box plot remember we've got the five vertical lines so this is the lowest amount of rainfall this would be the highest amount of rainfall this is the lower quartile the median and the upper quartile so that's what the five lines represent the lowest the highest the lower quartile the median and the upper quartile and the question says find the range find the median and find the interquartile range so i want you to press pause now to find the range the median and the interquartile range for this box plot Okay, so to start off by finding the range, well, let's figure out what each of the little boxes is worth to begin with. So we go from 0 to 1, and there's 10 boxes, so 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. So let's just check 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, great, So no, and then all the way to 1. So each of the little boxes is worth 0 0.1. So that means our lowest value here would be 0 0.3. Our lower quartile would be 0 0.8 millimetres. Our median here would be, we've got 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 that'd be 1.2 millimetres. Our upper quartile here, we've got 1.5, so 1.6, 1.7. And then the highest amount of rainfall here would be 2.5 millimetres. So we've written down our values for our lowest, our lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and the highest amount of rainfall. Now we can work out these answers. So the range. Well, the range is found by doing the largest take away the smallest. So it's going to be 2.5 subtract 0 0.3 is equal to 2.2 millimetres. So the range of the rainfall is 2.2 millimetres. The median, well, it's going to be our 1.2 millimetres in the middle, 1.2 millimetres. And the interquartile quartile range, remember from yesterday's video, that's fine by doing the upper quartile to subtract the lower quartile. So it's going to be 1.7 subtract 0.8, and that's equal to 0.9 millimetres. And that's it. So we find the range, the median, and the interquartile quartile range from this box plot. Okay, now let's have a look at a question for you to try. So we've got a table, and we're told the lowest value, the median, the upper quartile, the range, and the interquartile range. And I would like you to draw a box plot. So feel free to press pause and draw a box plot for this information. Okay, so we want to draw a box plot. Now, before we draw this box plot, we need to know five things. We need to know the lowest value, yes. The lower quartile, no. So I'm just going to write these down. We need to know the lowest value. We need to know the lower quartile. We need to know the median we need to know the upper quartile, and we need to know the largest value or the highest value. So they're the five things that we need to find to be able to draw a box plot. So the lowest value, that's six, fantastic. The median is 14, fantastic. And the upper quartile is 16. So we need to find the lower quartile and the highest value. Okay, so I'm going to start off by finding the highest value. So remember, the largest value subtract the smallest value will give us the range. So that means that if I do this number, take away 6, I get 20. So if I take our 6 and add 20, that's going to be 26. So that means the highest value must be 26. And let's just check that. 26, take away 6 is 20. Fantastic. In terms of our lower quartile, well, we know that the upper quartile is 16. And we know the interquartile range is 5. So the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile is 5. So that means that the lower quartile must be smaller than the upper quartile. So it must be 11. If we just take away 5, so if we do 16, take away 5, that's equal to 11. So it means the lower quartile must be 11. So that's fantastic. We now know the lowest value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value. So now we can draw a box plot. So let's do that. 
Okay, so the scale I chose horizontally was from 0 to 30. So I went up in 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And let's draw five lines. So let's just check that and check we've put them in the right places. So the lowest value, 6. So that's two little boxes after 5. Fantastic. The lower quartile, 11. Two little boxes after 10. So that's going to be 11. Uh, we've then got the median, which is 14. So that's going to be two little boxes before 15. So there, that's 14. Fantastic. The upper quartile is at 16. Yes. And the highest value at 26. Yes. Now we're going to get a ruler and pencil and we're going to draw a box around the middle 50% of the data. So around the upper quartile and the lower quartile, like so. So that's our box around the middle 50% of the data. And then we're going to connect that up to the lowest value and to the highest value, like so. And that's it. That's our box plot. Now, we can also be asked to compare box plots. So here we've got two different box plots. We've got reaction times. So we've got in seconds reaction times. So obviously, the quicker the reaction time, the lower the amount of seconds it would take to react. So the further down to the left, the quicker they are. The, the further to the right, the slower they are. And so we've got the reaction times for group A and the reaction times for group B. And we've got these box plots. So just looking at them, the first thing I can see is that they've actually got the same median. So that means that on average, they've got the same reaction time, that their average, the median, is the same. So that means that they've got the same average so let's write that down so i've written down that both groups have got the same median reaction time because obviously both groups have got the same median of 0.3 seconds so if we just looked at the medians we'd say well they've both got the same reaction times but actually there's a bit more to this than that okay so here both groups have got the same median reaction time now in this case the medians are both the same if one of the groups had a median that was further to the left so if, for instance, group A didn't have a median here and it was here somewhere, you could say the reaction times in group A are quicker than the reaction times in group B because their median is lower, it's further to the left than that in group B. If it was test scores, you could say whoever had the median which was further to the right, the, the one with the highest test score, they had performed better than the other ones and you could write that down. Okay, But in this case, both of the medians were the same, so I said both groups have got the same median reaction time. So we've written down that both groups have got the same median, but actually these box plots tell us a bit more information. They actually tell us that the reaction times in group A are more spread out. You can see that the lowest value and the highest value are really quite far apart, whereas in group B they're closer together. So the range for group A is much larger than the range for group B, so you could write that down. I like to look at the interquartile range as the spread of the middle 50%, because obviously with the range it could be affected by outliers. So if I looked at the interquartile range, I can see this box is much wider than this box. So I could say the interquartile range for group A is larger than the interquartile quartile range for group B, so their reaction times are more spread out or less consistent, they're much more consistent in group B. So let's write that down. So I've written down that IQR, the interquartile range for group A, is bigger than it is for group B because it's 0.15 seconds compared to 0.09 seconds. So the group A are less consistent than group B. Or you, or you could also say that group A is more spread out than group B. And that's it. So we've compared the medians. So here they've got the same median reaction time. But if one was further to the left, they would be faster. And you'd write that down. And then we've compared, in this case, interquartile ranges. And I like to compare the interquartile ranges because it, it excludes any outliers. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at box plots, the fact that a box plot, you draw the lowest value, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value. So you draw a box around those three middle lines, the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile, and you connect up the lowest value and the highest value of a line like so. We've looked at how to compare those box plots as well, and I really hope you found this video useful. So in this video, I'd highly recommend, particularly with box plots, the comparing of them can happen in different situations, or sometimes they're linked into cumulative frequency curves. So it could be that you've got a cumulative frequency curve as part A, and then the box plot question is part B. So I'd highly recommend you look at the practice questions in the description below, and they'll be quite useful for you. So today we've looked at box plots. I really hope you find it useful. Tomorrow, there's going to be 76 days to go into your GCC Maths exam. So tune in at 3 o'clock on YouTube and watch that video. So thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.